Welcome to our Voices from the Field event, reporting from inside Ukraine and its neighbors, which is jointly organized by United uh, Women in Faith, formerly United uh, Methodist Women, and Women's Peace Dialogue Platform, a regional network. And Voices from the Field is our new virtual series created to highlight our global initiatives and provide space to our women partners who work on the ground. I am Tatiana with United Women in Faith, formerly United Methodist Women, and I will moderate the event today. I am originally from Georgia, the country that suffered from Russia's aggression in August 2008. Peace remains an abstract concept until a war starts. So for Ukrainians, it became real in 2014 and now in February 2022, when Russians launched a full-scale unjustified war. Our agenda today is to hear from our partner from Ukraine, who will speak about the current situation on the ground and its impact on civilians, especially women and children. And then our members from Georgia, Lithuania and Latvia will talk about what they do to help its member. But before we move into our substantive conversation, I would like to ask Harriet Olson, our General Secretary and CEO, who's been involved in the creation of the Women's Peace Dialogue platform from the beginning to introduce this regional network. Please, Harriet, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tatiana, and um, welcome to all of the persons who are participating this morning. Um, as Tatiana said, I'm Harriet Jane Olson, and I'm the uh, secretary, the general secretary and uh, CEO of United Women in Faith. Um, I want to extend a special welcome to all of our panelists who will be uh, speaking on behalf of the Women's Peace Dialogue Platform. Um, it is. Uh, it is a real pleasure for us to host you. Um, and it would be an undiluted pleasure if it were not for the reason for the panel today. Uh, friends, as Tatiana said, the uh, incursions by Russia in 2008 and 2014 made it very clear uh, that there was an urgent need to build structures that would support peace uh, in the region, uh, the regions that are uh, directly um, alongside uh, Russia. The um, United Methodist Church has a presence in Russia and in Ukraine and in other places um, in Europe. And um, we, uh, so we had sisters who were um, in the affected areas and were connected uh, from the heart um, as well. Um, this is on top of United Methodist Women's long history of working for peace, uh, being part of the work at the United Nations um, and uh, paying special attention to uh, the women, peace and security needs uh, that have been highlighted over and over again at the United Nations uh, significantly in uh, the uh, Resolution 1325. Uh, often stated, but seldom attended to. So we knew that it was important for uh, women's organizations to be engaged on the ground, uh, that people who had uh, deep roots in the region needed to be engaged in the conversation, and uh, that particularly women peacemakers who uh, are documented over and over, and over again uh, to bring practical, solid movements forward for peace needed to be engaged. Our approach to this issue was to um, engage uh, with women's groups in the region that were already um, uh, organized. Uh, and so uh, we began to network, uh, to reach out to uh, persons in the region who were connected with uh, groups with a similar or complementary agenda. 
the uh, first consultation was held in 2015. And from that consultation, uh, the Women's Peace Dialogue uh, Network uh, was developed. Uh, today, we see the importance of the work. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, but there are currently no women included in the peace negotiations or in the humanitarian protection negotiations. Uh, this is a place where uh, women's voices are clearly needed and where women's concerns uh, can drive for productive results over and against uh, the tensions that surround uh, the uh, conflict that is um, being waged. Um, it's very important for us to stop the harm. Cessation of violence is not the same as peace, but cessation of violence is absolutely necessary to protect women and children and all who are in harm's way. This work with peace, the work for peace, the women's approach to work for peace is critically important in this time. And we're very grateful for our panelists today uh, for taking the time to be with us when there are so many things pulling at their attention uh, in this uh, important region of the world. Sisters, we salute you, we support you, and we're looking forward to hearing from you today. Thank you, Harriet. For years, the platform and women have been working on peace and gender, two very unpopular topics in some countries of the region. And now I will ask our Ukrainian member, Olena Suslova, who is the founder of the Women's Inform Information Consultative Center, a non-governmental organization founded in 1995, to, to tell us what is going on on the ground. Olena is a human rights activist and researcher and has over 20 years of experience working on both gender and peace. She is the experienced educator and trainer. And but you can see her full bio in the chat. And as it was mentioned, we'll have some more time for Q&A at the end. So please put your questions in the chat box. And now let's listen to Olena. Olena, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Tatiana. I'm Ukrainian, from Ukraine, 63 years old. I stay in Kyiv now. I was born, graduated school and university in Russia. I have lived in Ukraine for more than 40 years. I have been working for women's rights for more than 30 years. All these years, I try to work for peace. As Tatiana said, I'm founder of the Women's Information Consultative Center, um, Anastasia Nenka, who is the chair of the WACC, now is here and she follows me. Uh, almost three weeks of the mass Russia's inv invasion of Ukraine. 90 children killed. However, we are not sure these figures are accurate. Hundreds of secondary schools were destroyed or damaged. The maternity hospital in Mariupol city bombed and destroyed. A pregnant woman whose photo went around the world who gave a birth to a child after the bombing died yesterday. Her newborn child also died. In Kharkiv city, destroyed apartment buildings for 100,000 people. Some cities completely destroyed. Our colleague, Marina Pogacheva, IDP from Donetsk, founder of the non-governmental organization Berihinia in Mariupol, is keeping 60 children, elderly people, and people with disability, food and medicine. She is not in communication since March 5th. We have no info at all. We do not know the exact number of dead. It has already exceeded 2,500 uh, people only in Mariupol city. People are buried in mass graves, many of which cannot be identified. Our women stand up for Ukraine. 57,000 women are in, uh, in the Air Force. 7,000 are only in the Air Force. Some of our female defenders already killed by maniac occupants. Some ones have received state awards. Some ones posthumously. 
Humanitarian situation is close to the humanitarian catastrophe. More 2 million in Europe, Poland is fuller already, all the countries are close to it. The same quantity in the western part of Ukraine, Lviv region is full, others are close to it. The process is not over. Under estimation, it could be about 9 million because we are a country of 45 million of people before Putin came to free us, free from our life. Putin destroyed our country, he rapes our country and is laughing on the whole world. He needs no Ukraine. He needs the way to Europe. He needs the whole world. Naive and short-sighted ideas intensify and prolong the suffering of the people of Ukraine. They do not lead to peace, but only increase the threat to the whole world. Initiatives like the Code Pink encourage to tell Biden a no-fly zone and the neutral status for Ukraine because the World War III will start. Sorry, it started. It started with the neutral status of Ukraine. The occupied the Parisian nuclear station has 600 tons of activated uranus. Little boy dropped on Hiroshima city had 60 kilos. If 10,000 little boys will cover the ears, I do not know what the scale of, of consequences will be. Today, occupants detonated ammunition before the energy block one of the Zaporizhia nuclear station. What are we doing now? We can't help to everyone. It breaks our heart. We try to help and support different categories of women, those who evacuated in Ukraine and in other countries. Those who remain in places of permanent residence, surrounded by occupiers, in places of active hostility, in relatively safe places like Kiev, where I'm staying and where air raids around the hair 10 times during the day at least, in places of possible evacuation. At the same time, we can't work for current needs and short-term results. We have to work on strategies stop the war against humanity, develop long-term strategy to work as one of the gender analysis concepts tell on current needs and strategic interests. I would like to thank to our regional platform, Women, Peace and Security, whose sisters not only sent words of support, they were first to send us financial support, Georgia, Latvia, Lithuania, we thank to the United Women in Faith, former United Methodist Women, for continual support of our platform and solidarity. We thank to everyone for thoughts, prayers, words, advocacy, financial support. We fight and conquer. What is our superpower? We are from Ukraine. Thank you for your attention, Anastasia. The floor is yours. Thank you, Elena. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I want to continue on and say about what we do in Women's Information Consulted at Center. Uh, we have four directions that we mm -hmm. are actively working with during the war. The first one, establishment of a network of coordinators from among our activists in Ukraine who remained in place since of a permanent residence and continue to work as we. The second one, uh, dealing with the needs of girls and women with young children who are in shelters and have urgent needs that cannot be met due to lack of funds, access or availability in shops uh, or pharmacies. The third one, posting on the site relevant information that people need during the war, train schedule, list of official channels of information, list of instruction on how to act if one of the dangers occurs. All this information is on our website in the new created section of the war. And the last one, it's organization of volunteer work. Uh, currently we have an active network of coordinators 
uh, coordinators located in uh, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Vinnytsia, Sumy, Kharkiv, Kiev, Poltava regions, and the city of Kiev, and more than 30 volunteers. Uh, the, the first 10 days were organizationally diff very difficult because we did everything we could and everyone who could. There was not enough time for structuring and management and constant air raid sirens as now also often stop working. Uh, today's direction of volunteers and coordinators is clearly divided. The main purpose of working with coordinated is uh, in the regions is to involve in the activities, including uh, in the framework of the implementation on UN's uh, Council Resolution 1325, in those tasks that can be performed locally uh, in regions of our coordinators. And we are already uh, receiving feedbacks from uh, them, and uh, um, they said that such work and such support allows them to be helpful and less um, anxious while sitting in shelters and just listening to siren sound. And this is the direction we plan to deepen to help specific activities um, in this difficult time during the war to work, in particular in approaching our yeah. victory. <clears throat> Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Olena and Anastasia, so much for your presentation and in real war situation. So, of course, I mean, it's like in horror movie we all feel by what is going on in Ukraine and why. And thank you for sharing what your organization is trying to do in this horrible situation. So now I will call our current coordinator of Women's Peace Dialogue, Julia Harashvili from Georgia. And Julia is the chairperson of IDP Women's Association Kent Sand in Georgia. She is a physicist who peacefully worked in the research lab before the Russia attacked Abkhazia in 1992-93. And Abkhazia is a breakaway region now in Georgia. So Julia was displaced herself in 1993. She moved to the capital, Tbilisi, and she founded the organization to help people like her displaced by war and conflict. And Julia has served on the high level advisory group for the global study on the impact of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325. And she received distinguished awards for her peace work. So please, Julia, tell us what Georgia is doing to help. Thank you, Tatiana. And thank you to all panelists and especially thanks to Olena and to Anastasia who are currently under bombing in uh, Kiev, uh, who not, not maybe in this moment, but who stayed in Kiev and who resist to what is happening, this terrible horror invasion of Russia into Ukraine, which cannot be justified and cannot be explained from normal point of view why it could happen in 21st century. As Tatiana told and as Harriet already explained about our uh, Women's uh, Peace Dialogue regional platform, we are a group of women who came together to try to help each other and to help peace activists. But unfortunately, in this situation, we need to help to our sisters who are in open war and one of the most criminal wars, I will say, which happens in 21st century. And uh, as Olena and her colleagues from Ukraine were helping us in the late early 19th and in 2008 because Georgia survived already several waves of war and occupation and uh, two of our uh, territories are recognized by Russia and are separated and people who are displaced and I will take few, few seconds from from my speech to thank all sisters from United Women in Faith for from former uh, United Methodist women for this incredible assistance which they provided to our platform and to our concrete organization to help to internally displaced women and children. 
And now it's this period when we all together need to help to our Ukrainian sisters. From the first days, like it happened, uh, Georgian civil society was mobilized. I will not talk about actions of protest because our government, uh, according to different reasons, decided not to uh, join to sanctions because any moment uh, uh, Putin's army could also turn against Georgia. Probably it was the main reason we tried to, to, to uh, calm us with this, this explanation. But civil society was immediately realized and we as regional platform, we put several aims. First, to support our members and organizations in Ukraine who are in extreme need. Uh, support them with our contacts, connect them with different organizations which can help and can raise voice about their needs. And again, I want to thank Olena, who assisted us to be contacted with some organizations who have no, who have no opportunity now uh, to communicate with the rest of the world. The second, what we tried to do, and uh, it was common agreement of all members of platform that from money which we had, very small project, we will send money to support our sister organizations in Ukraine. The second, what we thought, it's to make calls to all international organizations and to, uh, to use all opportunities, our personal and organizational capacities to bring Ukrainian women's voices to all governments and to all international organizations to rise and to consolidate support, to show solidarity. The third, what we tried to do, it's to organize possible assistance to those people who already arrived to Georgia. Before 24 of February, when the aggression started, it was 6,093 Ukrainians in Georgia who arrived for touristic reasons or for other reasons and who could not go back. Georgian government provides them with free accommodation, food, medical assistance, but these people need a lot. They need now uh, long-term support, they need psychosocial, uh, we plan to organize camps for children to support with them with rehabilitation and we mobilize now all our opportunities and resources because unfortunately we have this relevant experience from our wars. Uh, what also we are trying to do, uh, for the moment there are already more than 4,000 people who came like refugees and asylum seekers from Ukraine. And uh, uh, we try to organize in different uh, towns of Georgia uh, kind of staff, kind of groups which will assist and which coordinate assistance to them because they need everything starting from accommodation and coming to such things like laundry, like uh, diapers and medicines. And from Friday, we will start uh, mobile medical assistance to people who are in different uh, public buildings accommodated in different public buildings or also in private families. And we also start uh, from this week, uh, psychosocial assistance to people who work with IDPs in Western Ukraine through some of Ukrainian organizations, our psychologists with, again, unfortunately, big experience to provide emergency uh, assistance for trauma, uh, we'll do online sessions for them. We participate in UN Coordination Council of Georgia, trying to provide all possible information and to have feedback from UN what can be done for Ukrainians staying for the moment in Georgia. And today, Georgian NGOs organized a, a statement and appeal to Georgian government to demand that it will be special measures for Ukrainian uh, arrival, uh, people who are arriving from Ukraine. I'm sorry, I'm very emotional after Olena's words, because each day and each night we are looking what is going on with our sisters, with our brothers in Ukraine who demonstrate incredible, incredible courage uh, to protect their own lands and to protect their children, their elderly and their families. And I hope very much that by our consolidated effort, we will be able to support both Papres by to give moral support, to give psychological support to our sisters, but also to organize urgently this assistance, which is necessary. It's not all, only financial assistance. What we see in East, Western Ukraine, where we also coordinate with some organization, it's already not things which you can buy for money. You need to bring products. You need to bring accumulators for telephones. You need to bring 
uh, the same medicines and diapers directly to people and to help organizations like Olenas and other members of platform and other organizations because Ukraine has very strong civil society to support people in need currently, today, immediately. Glory to Ukraine, glory to people who are doing this. And please feel Olena that we are together. And all platforms support you. And for me, it was very important that all women told that all our fees, everything what we planned to do before need to be switched now to Ukraine. Thank you very much. And I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Tatiana, for organizing this session. And thanks to Haria once more. Thank you, Julia, for your presentation. It's very important, you know, to know what's going on in Georgia and how people of Georgia and civil society in Georgia are helping Ukraine when Georgian government has different position. And it's very important for every of us to remember that we should uh, we can we should help our Ukrainian uh, partners and women and children with whatever we can. And we are in solidarity with them in this horror of that day. Tatiana, I'm very sorry. I want to add one sentence. Georgia government tries to help by all possible humanitarian means. Each day the aircraft with humanitarian is going and they provide free accommodation and food, but it's not enough. It's what we will see. Sorry. Yes, yeah, thank you, Julia. It's very good to hear that the government is helping and that people are helping and that's it, how your organization is helping one of our members in such ordeal. So, and I will also ask our members in the US to do everything possible to, to support women and children in Ukraine. And now I will turn to our partner, to our member from Lithuania, Virginia. And Virginia Alexeyune has been the executive director of the Center for Equality Advancement in Vilnius, Lithuania since 2003. And for 15 years, she worked on gender equality and anti-discrimination. She built her expertise, expertise in the field of gender equality policies and gender-based violence. She participated in two rounds of peace dialogues with our platform, and she serves on planning committee of the platform. Her full bio is in the chat. So Virginia, please tell us how Lithuania helps Ukraine. Okay, thank you, Tatiana, for this introduction. And actually, I made some <clears throat> presentation, so if it's possible to get it on the screen. And uh, uh, you know, when I joined uh, this platform by uh, Olena, who invi Olena invited me. And later on, people were asking, why you from Lithuania, why you are in this platform? Uh, Lithuania is a member of NATO, Lithuania is EU member. Why, why these uh, peace things are really interesting for you? And actually, we were discussing a lot with women uh, of, of peace platform and with Olana and really I never ever would have think that war is so close to all of us and to, to citizens of Lithuania as well. So here you see this first picture is uh, uh, two flags, flag of Ukraine and flag of Lithuania, and you can see a lot of Ukraine flags now on, on these days in, in Lithuania. And we really share very much this, uh, all these events and what is going in Ukraine. And I am really proud being Lithuanian uh, because of our government and civil society are so united in the face of, of this war, which we take already as war against historically one country we had 
many years ago, Ukraine, Belarus, and Lithuania was one big, big country. So can I have next slide, please? So as I already was introduced, I am Virginia Alexeyuna, Director of the Center for Equality Advancement, and will briefly tell about what is going now in Lithuania in support of uh, Ukraine people. So next slide, please. As of today's statistics, uh, we have more than 12,000 uh, uh, people from Ukraine, uh, but every every hour numbers are increasing and out of of this uh, 12000 uh, we have more than 5000 children uh, most uh, of them uh, are coming with mothers or with uh, some grandparents uh, and uh, uh, citizens uh, are uh, going first of all to to the center, special centers. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, we have registration for, for these people and uh, really all the, uh, uh, all the uh, all institutions are working very well uh, at the moment and they are trying to do the best. And these are, you can see here steps what, what uh, are taken and immediately uh, this woman and children mostly are getting uh, visas and they, they are getting food and uh, also are uh, allocated to some places and uh, uh, people immediately during first three or five days uh, already wrote, uh, we have coordinating center uh, where all all this that data coming and immediately like most uh, all, around nine thousand houses people from from different regions of of Lithuania uh, already said that they would like to have families from Ukraine and uh, help what they they can and also every municipality has uh, some you know, schools or, or places where to uh, to put put these people for them for the moment. Next slide, please. And uh, you can find a lot of uh, uh, Ukraine flags, as already said, and uh, artists are are working uh, uh, just in emotional support, probably and for Ukraine uh, people and for Lithuanians as well. Next slide, please. And we have for human, humanitarian aids, we have uh, uh, six uh, uh, very strong and, and well-working organizations uh, like Red Cross, Caritas, uh, Order of Malta, Food Bank, Save the Children and Lithuanian Women's Lobby you can see here what they are responsible for and uh, really people are so united and trying to help everyone how they can and uh, just imagine when during first 10 days more than 17 million euros were donated just for Ukraine aid. So uh, uh, people from Lithuania and organizations, business, everyone. So these numbers are really, really very big, but, but as already Anastasia told and o Olena that uh, uh, not only uh, money are very important, very important are uh, food and uh, and medicine and all the other things to, to get to Ukraine. So uh, Lithuanian people are working uh, uh, and trying to uh, uh, the, all, all these things through the Polish border to, to get to Ukraine. Next slide, please. And uh, 
uh, we as women organization, we are trying to also to keep in mind the women, what, what, what is necessary for, for women and uh, trying to, to buy what is important for them. Next slide, please. And a lot every day, starting from the evening on 24th of February, uh, here in Lithuania, different organizations are organizing different events and concerts and meetings. And the most popular priest is in front of the embassy of Russia. And here you can see one of the uh, meetings which was held on the 27th of uh, February where a lot of women came to protest uh, at the Russian embassy um, calling on Russian women to rise up and stop the war in Ukraine. Next slide please. And some, some more pictures to show that really huge number of people coming and you can see Lithuanian and Ukraine flags. Next slide, please. And this uh, 8th of March also was uh, dedicated uh, to support Ukraine women and to, uh, to collect finances also for, for this occasion. And this, uh, uh, on the 8th of March, we had meeting uh, in front of uh, Ukraine embassy because it was for the solidarity. Next slide, please. And I just uh, put it some pictures and here you can see our um, parliament chair who is very, very supportive and uh, uh, to the gender issues as well and, and to Ukraine women. So this is quote you can, you can read here. Next slide, please. And uh, as, uh, as you see here, sunflowers, which are symbol now for Ukraine and uh, on the left on the picture is uh, part of the team of, of our organization at this meeting. Next slide, please. I also want to share a, a petition which was organized by Active Lithuanian Women Committee. And also to uh, this petition uh, to mothers of Russian soldiers to stop war. Uh, and here is the link to this petition to those who would like to sign and probably would be good to those who would like to, I, I will copy and put in the chat uh, and you can go directly and uh, those who think it's uh, worth to, just to, to sign it. Next slide, please. And also I want to, to share some, uh, as I said, a lot of things are going around, but here, uh, Lithuanian municipality is uh, very active and just because things are so sad, so some more funny, if I may say things. So Vilnius municipality uh, uh, put it, uh, sign Putin the hug is waiting for you, which appeared on the road leading to the Russian embassy. Uh, and and it's still staying there. Next slide, please. And one one more thing, which which was done. This uh, street where Russian embassy is very small, and just one but huge building of Russian embassy is is there. So uh, municipality decided to change uh, name of the street, and now it's called. Uh, um, uh, uh, street of uh, Ukraine Hero Street. And uh, if you want to send letter by post to Russian embassy, you, you have to write down this address. So as you see different ways and different strategies to support, to support Ukraines and uh, uh, 
uh, everyone does and are very creative people, I can say. Next slide, please. And here is my last slide. Uh, and uh, from the uh, Friday uh, meeting, and this meeting was anniversary, anniversary of 30, 32nd anniversary of Lithuanian independence. So as you see, again, the Ukraine flag was uh, like, I don't know, 30 meters flag through the main street of the capital going in, in support. And uh, really we're sending blessings and all the wish Slava Ukraine, Vero and Slava. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. And yes, it's a really hard situation for our Ukrainian uh, sisters. And thank you for sharing how you and your organization and Lithuanian and people in Lithuania, they support Ukraine. And thank you for sharing your initiatives and thank you for sharing the different strategies, how we can all help. And one is to sign the petition. And now it's time to turn to another member of the platform from the Baltic countries, Iluta Lace, who is a social worker, a trainer and an activist. And she started the resource center for women, Marta, that educates women about their rights and helps women to develop their knowledge and competency. Iluta is an expert in women's rights and gender equality in ex-Soviet countries. So same, her bio is in the chat. And now, thank you, Iluta, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Tatiana. So let's show the slide. Uh, slides, my slide. Thank you, yeah. So I'm head of Marta Centers and we started this organization already 22 years two years ago. And if we, in the next slide, we can see that actually uh, this is our team uh, and we are, uh, we work in Latvia. We have several branches, Riga, Liepai, Rezekne. We provide uh, rehabilitation to victims of violence and victims of trafficking. And in the next slide, you can see the actually operating model of Marta Centers that we do provide practical support for women that are in need. Also do lots of advocacy on national and international level to improve women's uh, rights and promote women's human rights culture, um, do researches, uh, prevention work, but also we do share our methods, approaches with, uh, with um, uh, other countries, uh, and especially uh, countries in um, like, uh, yeah, our neighboring countries and others. And uh, if we look at the situation of uh, next slide, what we have done, next slide, if we can go to next slide. Yeah, so we have, for example, whenever, um, whenever uh, Lukashenko started his uh, uh, crime actions in Belarus, we also uh, we were in solidarity with our sister organizations that is also part of this platform and provided uh, our part and supported repressed people there and our sisters there. And currently, of course, we do what we can uh, within our capacity to support our sisters in Ukraine. So let's go to the next slide and we can see also similar stories like Virginia told about Lithuania. I'm also proud of, of my government and I'm also proud of our society. Uh, such unity and such unitedness in uh, our country, I have felt only when we fought for our independence uh, uh, end of uh, 80s, 90s, uh, when we, we gathered uh, together, when we had lots of nonviolent actions uh, just to get our independence. And currently, we are as united at, at those times to, to help our, uh, our, our, our friends and sisters and brothers in Ukraine. So here are our small uh, protest actions. They are everywhere, every day, in front of Russian uh, embassy, protest actions in front of Ukrainian embassy support actions. Uh, every schools, you know, every company have Ukrainian flag. Uh, Ukrainian fl uh, flags are everywhere, just everywhere. This is, for example, Putin's pictures that uh, Medicine Museum put uh, on the walls that is just in front of Russian embassy. Uh, these are also uh, these are pictures showing solidarity with the heroes that are already uh, uh, are not with us uh, that fought for uh, uh, again in this horrible war. If you go to next um, 
Uh, next um, picture, we can see also the demonstrations that we have had to support Ukraine and, and to show our um, uh, attitude towards war. And at the same time, I can say that, for example, uh, Right now, I sit around the same round table uh, with organizations that actually on daily basis, uh, we would oppose each other regarding specific issues. But right now, to support Ukrainian people, to support re refugees, to support people in Ukraine, we, we sit together, we, we think together. We have created wonderful platform also, if we go to next slide, um, wonderful platform, next slide, uh, where people, if they travel to you, uh, uh, they, uh, flee from Ukraine, uh, they can just fill in already what they need, what are their expectations, and uh, th uh, this platform is in Ukrainian, Russian, English, and Latvian, and uh, companies or NGOs can uh, offer their support, and people that uh, come to our country, they can uh, write, uh, write what they actually need. We have already issued um, uh, around 600 humanitarian visas. It means that people can work here. We have uh, created platform which job offers for people that come from Ukraine and uh, and uh, and whether Ukrainian language uh, uh, is needed. So. There are plenty of initiatives and really every three days uh, our NGOs, uh, government, municipalities uh, meet up and uh, discuss how things are going on, what we can improve. For example, this morning we also had uh, had this meeting and in three days again we will meet and, and discuss. Uh, oh, oh, we already have two things, one for those refugees that uh, we welcome in our country and uh, for those that are already um, uh, in Latvia, and we need to uh, to continue to provide support. But we, as Marta centers, we also have uh, friends uh, 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 within this um, platform with Olena and uh, Anastasia. But we also have friends in Eastern Ukraine. Can we go to further slide? Next slide. So uh, last. Uh, Two three years, we had a project where we supported uh, mayors and uh, you know other lead la leading ladies uh, from U Eastern Ukrainian um, um, municipalities to develop their gender equality plans to improve uh, their actions towards women's rights, and uh, we hosted also a visit in Latvia for them. And of course, on 21st 4th of February, we just directly ask them what they need, how can we support them. And next slide. Uh, and we realize that actually they need uh, both psychological support and economical support. And uh, uh, here, you, uh, right now, our psychologists, together with other organizations, we provide psychological support distantly, remotely. We have already provided several, um, uh, yeah, until Friday it were, 23 consultations, probably right now there are many more because usually requests to get uh, consultation comes when it's evening, when bombarding starts. Uh, we have our own way that we have created how to provide this support and there are just some issues that you can uh, um, read uh, what people say, what kind of situations they are in. And uh, this is really, really heartbreaking stories, of course. And also as NGO leader, I also know that if you are a trustful organization, you know how to use funds and uh, how to uh, what uh, how to deal with the needs because they are changing, and that's why I also try to raise funds uh, to support um, uh, not only Olena's organization but also other organizations in uh, Eastern Ukraine that are in these hot spots and that are trying to to provide all the support that is necessary for these. Um, uh, people that are in these vulnerable situations, women, children, elderly persons, people with disabilities that lack medicine, that lack food, that lack everything, warmth and heating. So it's uh, this is what we try to do right now, both psychological support distantly and economic support. And for refugees here in Latvia, we also are ready to provide psychological support and uh, we will also recruit Ukrainian specialists that are here to be within our team so that we could be more successful. And if you go to the last slide, um, uh, it means that uh, I, I, I believe that only being united and only um, working together, we can stop this huge aggressor, this terrorist, honestly, Putin, and, and realize that Ukrainian people, they fight for all of us right now, actually. And we have to be united with them and stand with our sisters and, and brothers in Ukraine. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you, Iluta, for uh, sharing with us what you and, and Latvia is doing to support Ukraine. And we heard from all speakers what they do in real world situation. And you learned about the platform's work in action, showing the unbreakable solidarity and power of women who united and are helping one of our members in very hard times. I should tell you that United uh, Women in Faith is helping with emergency funds, and we will share the link with you how you can help. I also want to thank a very special friend of Women Peace Dialogue platform. I know she is with us today, Ambassador Marie Jacobson from the Swedish Ministry for Foreign Affairs, who's been with us from the very beginning and her continuous support was critical for the platform. And now we have some time for Q&A, which will be moderated by my colleague, Christy Campos. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Um, yes, I would just like to say that uh, to all of the women on our panel that we are so moved by your powerful words today and our prayers are certainly with you uh, in your brave work. And we have many questions today. Yeah, and so we'd like to just uh, jump right into some that have already been answered uh, in, in, in the chat, but we'd like to go ahead and see if you could to give that answer to everyone on the call today. Um, there is news today that Russia has used chemical weapons in Ukraine. Could you speak to that? That's a question to Olena, right, and uh, Anastasia. Uh, I could answer a few questions. Um, yes, Russia used it several times, phosphorus bombs, and one of them was being used uh, for petroleum uh, base, but uh, lead it to awful consequences. Uh, it is not too often, however, it is, and also I mentioned during um, my presentation about high level of threat because they occupied Chernobyl uh, uh, nuclear station and uh, Zaporizhia nuclear station. They do not allow uh, Ukrainian specialists to go in, inside and therefore it is really high level of uh, threat of uh, global disaster in this case. Thank you. Uh, we have several questions about our sisters in Christ in Russia and um, it, how fully aware they are of what's going on and if they are safe. I do not know, maybe uh, my colleagues from the platform also <clears throat> could answer this question. We have some some um, members of our platform from Russia. However, uh, people who are against uh, Putin in Russia, they are not allowed to, to be uh, visible and to participate in such kind of event like this one. Uh, because uh, repression in this country uh, becomes more and more harder. Uh, therefore, our communications practically do not exist. There are very few. And um, uh, in general, communication is, um, is not very successful. I mentioned that I was born in Russia and my sister lives in Russia. She thought that uh, US came to Ukraine and Russia has to free us, free us from our life, as I said. Therefore, uh, um, we try to uh, reorient our communication to other more urgent needs and more, um, um, more result-oriented situations. Unfortunately, uh, humanitarian catastrophe in Russia, with uh, brains, with thinking, this approach is really very hard now. Thank you. Um, we have a question asked if, if any of you are allowed to be part of any peace talks with the country's leaders in your country. I saw Luta uh, raised the hand, maybe the, she would like to add, uh, answer a few previous question. Yeah, I'll, 
about Russia, yeah, it's it's so that uh, we see that one of the thing, one of the wars is information war, and uh, for example, Latvia has prohibited all Russia pro Russian propaganda channels. Uh, uh, so because, and we also encourage people to share the um, uh, information that is trustful. That uh, and also about Russian people, the, these Russian people that are in Latvia, they're also scared being in Latvia. They, if they want to make some kind of citizenship uh, documents or something, they are afraid to go enter Russia's embassy because they are afraid not to go out of this embassy, that they will be brought back to Russia and tortured. So it's, a, it's really a challenge. So one, one thing that we can do is uh, to inform all our um, people with, uh, and feed them with trustful information because they don't get it in Russia. We do have um, a hand raised from Harriet Olson. Thank you, Christy. I, I just wanted to add briefly that um, the, uh, through UMC channels, the bishop has been in contact and said uh, how difficult it was to communicate um, and that he would be moving to a different platform. Um, and I think some of what uh, Bishop Kagai uh, shares will be made public once we receive it, but the communication is quite difficult. And um, Harriet, would you also like to speak to the questions of we have our overwhelming questions of how you uh, how our organization could assist in this? Yes, thank you. And I see that Julia would like to speak as well to this. Uh, but uh, just briefly, um, as Tatiana mentioned, United Women in Faith is um, really is in the process of releasing emergency funds. And sisters, you would know that this is possible because of your mission giving. So we don't have to wait for the results of a special appeal. Uh, but uh, there are many places that we um, could give and we could get guidance from the, the players here and the women's uh, peace uh, dialogue platform um, and others. So if you would like to contribute directly, uh, Tatiana will help us know how that is, uh, how, how best to do that. But I believe in addition to your pledge, you might uh, make a gift specified for international ministries uh, so that we can uh, respond. Um, the uh, United Methodist Church has a, a program uh, called United Methodist Commission on Relief, a Committee on Relief, uh, and uh, they have been uh, releasing their emergency grants to United Methodist churches in the region uh, to support the way they're supporting refugees, um, and they are building new partnerships to be able to do more. So you can look for more information coming from UMCOR. And finally, um, many of you know that uh, the um, uh, church World Service has been a partner of Methodist Church and other churches across the United States since the end of World War II. Um, their original purpose was to aid with refugees. So uh, you can also find more information about uh, Church World Service and their contemporary work. Um, as the speakers mentioned, sometimes the need is for funds and some, sometimes the need is for uh, resources. And so uh, the original, the very first work uh, was of um, uh, Church World Service was uh, working with American farmers to supply foodstuffs to the uh, post-World War II uh, country, devastated countries. And uh, so th that experience goes back a long time. So I uh, just hope that's helpful. Thank you, Harriet, very much. And Julia, thank you for being patient with your hand up. We're anxious to hear from you. No, thank you for opportunity to speak once more. Very briefly, there were questions about, uh, to me, uh, about how Resolution 1325 can be used. And I think that we do not use it really uh, enough. But what I want to say, I, I do not know if Olena will agree with me, but I know that women in Ukraine, all these coming years, because it was, we all living around Russia, we all have this trouble, and we know that one or another day, it might be aggression. And for instance, women from Ukraine could include in ex national action plans, such things like gender audit of security, and many other things who a little bit contributed to prevention. And I think it's not preparedness of Ukrainian women, it will be even more victims and even more problems. So their constant lobby and advocacy, Olena, I'm sorry that I'm speaking instead of you, but it's my impression from here. And we are trying to do the same in Georgia, to warn our government and to see, because it's always very difficult to have balance 
not to be accused in aggression from our support side of small country if we will start preparedness, but to be prepared. And of course, one of what we are trying to do, uh, by the way, OSCE is helping us with this, to, to have voice of our platform, to call to everybody, to UN, to OSCE, to all international institutions. Uh, there is such um, networks like Women Action Network for protect for women in displacement, to use all these instruments to revive a resolution 1325 now, like a uh, motto for action, for immediate action, to include women in humanitarian assistance, to ask women, to support women and to save women, because women now are responsible for very many things. And one more thing which I wanted to add, in Georgia we have now quite big flow, people coming from Russia, because they do not agree maybe with Putin's uh, uh, what, what he is doing, but what we see is that they absolutely do not know. I agree with my colleagues. So inside of Russia, there is such a brainwashing and there is no information what in reality is happy, uh, happening in Ukraine. I am physicist by my background and what Olena was saying about Chernobyl and Zaporizhia uh, um, uh, nuclear stations, it's a real threat for whole world. And we need also to spread this information and somehow to stop Putin. I know that uh, United Methodist Women from very beginning of their creation were very courageous organization. And what I was thinking, I do not know if it's possible, like church organization and like now organization, which is uniting women in faith. Maybe you can make kind of appeal to other churches also to support this appeal for peace. Because we have Russian Orthodox Church who is silent with all these things. We have another churches. And I think that churches also should appeal to peace and should support women in this very, very important their fight for their survival. Because now we are talking about survival. And not only survival of Ukraine, but of survival of whole civilized world. I'm sorry again to be emotional, but I think we need to do yeah. something urgently. Julia, occupiers bombed churches, synagogues, and mosques. They bombed Babin Yar, the place where during Second World War, they killed many Jews, Roma people, and Ukrainian people. Therefore, uh, uh, people in faith could pray, and our prayers are important. However, now it is impossible to stop or to convince somehow, because murderers and all the things that they are doing, they're absolutely behind of any kind of uh, human approach, particularly in this one. And I'm agree with you on 1325. And uh, I, I would like to remind, I am not anymore in the management of the our center. However, Anastasia and her colleagues, they, um, uh, they covered uh, 1,004 hundred uh, communities around Ukraine before the invasion started. And they, uh, it, it was about 1325. They sent checklists how to be ready for comprehensive security, how to answer a different uh, urgently needs related to shelters, related to evacuation, related to communication. Some of these communities continue to send messages to the Women's Information Consultative Center till now. Therefore, uh, this resolution is very important. I think it is important for any country around the world. Doesn't matter. Does it recognize uh, problems related to the conflict or no? Thank you. <clears throat> Um, with our few minutes remaining, I'd like to see if we could hear from each of you on what concrete actions that you recommend to the international community to take to help Ukraine and its people, um, how people can join you today to help. Would you like to start, Virginia? Uh, thank you. Uh, as I showed from all these examples, what is going in Lithuania, I think it's very important to show solidarity to Ukraine people, 
uh, by financial su support or, or some emotional support. But from the other hand, it's very important to, uh, to talk to politicians, to, to, to do real steps because, uh, you know, time is passing by and every day people in Ukraine are killed and somebody's sons and, and daughters, fathers and, and mothers and uh, seems that nothing is going, uh, you know, nothing changes. And the worst thing, mm -hmm. as Olena used to say, you know, war is in Ukraine is going already for eight years. Why, why you are shocked now? War is, is going and we are used to it. You know, I, even me, when, when the war started, I couldn't sleep for three nights. And now I check my evil email or, or Facebook every morning, but I also starting, you know, like, okay, war is going and life is going. So we don't have to, to use to the war because every moment, every minute, people are killed in Ukraine and we need really from politicians, very, very concrete steps to be done to stop this war, because this is really third world war, not special, special occupation, not, not special just for Ukraine. This is for whole world. May I continue? Yes. So I just, uh, I think it's really necessary to request our governments to be very, very tough uh, on sanctions on Russia, because otherwise, if we soften them or uh, buy this or, uh, or you know, then we know that we, this is a financing, uh, financing for uh, the war in Ukraine. So sanctions, it's really important. Then uh, another thing is really trustful uh, information share share uh, as much as possible trustful or uh, information and of course raise funds and support grassroots uh, organizations that work for women children vulnerable groups in in ukraine but most of all just all the efforts to stop this huge aggressor thank you anastasia would you like to go next mike mike uh, Julia, would you like to go and answer that question? We will continue our efforts uh, with our government to have very visible and substantial support to Ukraine. And uh, the first what we will do in coming days is to organize um, headquarters, which will be focal points in each region of Georgia to receive uh, refugees from Ukraine, and not only to be uh, around by humanitarian assistance, but to do also all possible assistance and support in all international institutions. I think it is very necessary. We also will use all our contacts and uh, we will try to revise some of such uh, organizations which are not now working international organizations that uh, the message and the support will come from all sides and not only from European Union. Thank you so much. And thank you for all sisters for being here and for giving us support. Yes. And Anastasia, do you have any uh, final comments for us? She has some problems with uh, voice and she could not switch on, unfortunately. So okay. All right. I, I, I can uh, add a <laughs> few words about uh, support because I uh, saw many questions about it. Yes, if you, please. If you would like to support specific organizations like Iluta mentioned, we could send you these specific um, names and addresses of these organizations who continue to work in this area. Also, if you like to support just in general Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian National Bank opened a multi-currency account and what is uh, appropriate for around the world and you also could support it. You could support it if you have some specific uh, categories of uh, women whom you would like to support. Uh, we also could give you such uh, 
uh, contacts uh, and you could support uh, them as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We appreciate all of the passion and emotion that you have shared with us today as you've spoken about your work. Um, and thank you so much for your time and thank you for the wonderful questions. So this is the link and whatever you give will go to, to our work in Ukraine and in the neighboring countries for emergency needs and other needs as will be recommended by the platform members and to other organizations in these countries as also recommended by the platform members. Thank you.